What's up, Bike Rumor fans? Today I'm going to explain how the all new RockShox Debonair Air Spring works. And by new, I mean for the model year 2021 forks, which are coming out here now in April of 2020. So this is it. It looks very similar to before, except for two things the seal head and the foot nut. And I'm going to explain what those do in just a second. But the whole point of revamping the new Air Spring, which comes in the Pike, the Lyric, the Yari, and the Revelation, as well as there's a similar version of this in the new SID, and we'll talk about that separately in our review of the SID that's coming out as a different video. But the point of this was to keep the fork sitting higher in its travel, meaning when you first get on it in that little bit of suppleness, what happens when you actually get out on the trail, that can kind of like bob around a little bit and it almost becomes useless travel because what happens is on the older version, meaning from model year 20, and earlier, the piston, which is this black part here, would have to pass by a dimple and that resets the air pressure into the negative. And as it does that, it slips by this, you have your spring rate, you know, which normally starts low and it kind of comes up. As it hits that little dimple, it's gonna go poop back down just a hair and then start ramping up again. And so you get this first little bit that's kind of like weird travel, so to speak. What they did is they moved the dimple up. So let's just say the dimple's sitting, well, I can show you exactly where. This is um, where the piston sits inside the fork. So the bolt that's on the bottom here, bolts into the foot nut, it threads in. So this is what secures the piston shaft and everything that you're seeing here to the bottom of the fork. This stays where it is, essentially. Now think about it for a second. As you hit a bump, the sliders, or the lowers, go up the stanchions, okay? So as this unit moves up, it's pushing this up, basically like this. So you can think about it as sliding up, as that goes, it's squishing your positive air chamber, compressing that air is what provides the spring. And of course, the more you compress it, the harder it gets to compress more, which is why when you see a spring curb, it usually goes like this and ramps up because as the travel increases, it's getting harder and harder and harder to compress it more. Okay, let's say this is where this is. What they used to do was have the dimple inside the sliders was about here. And of course, now for the new one, they moved it right in line with where the piston seal sits. So what that means is, as you're pumping air into the positive chamber, it's getting around the seal and filling the negative chamber too. So this is your negative chamber. Is this little gap between the seal head and the piston seal, that's it. That's all there is for the negative chamber. It seems really small when you see it in comparison like this. What that does is it equalizes both chambers simultaneously and equally so that you're starting from scratch, you're starting from level. The second you hop on your bike and you get a little bit of sag, it's pushing this just a little bit. So now the dimples down here, it's locked in the air spring pressure or the air pressure for your negative. It's locked in the air pressure for the positive. So now that curve, instead of going like this and hitting a little bump when it hits the seal, passes the seal or the dimple and going, this time it's perfectly smooth, perfectly predictable and perfectly controllable from an engineering standpoint. That's important because what RockShox wanted was to have a predictable air spring curve. Now, for you, the rider, what's the benefit? Twofold. When you're filling your positive air chamber now, you're also filling the negative at the same time. Before, when that dimple was just above, you'd fill the positive, you'd have to cycle the fork a couple times, really just once, but all of us didn't bump bump, you know? You'd have to do that to let air slip past the seal and into the negative. So let's say you pump this to 80 PSI, and then you did that, all of a sudden this was, you know, now sitting at maybe like 70 PSI because you had pumped some into the extra chamber, it, the whole thing went down. Now you gotta put the pump back on, pump it up a little bit more. And so getting that just right was kind of a guessing game almost, or you could get it close enough. Now, because you're filling both of them at the same time and you don't have to cycle it to get the negative filled, you're basically getting it exactly where you want it right from the start. So it makes setup easier. But from a performance standpoint, what that means is it's gonna keep that fork sitting higher in the travel. And so if you've ridden a RockShox before and you just felt like it was a little too soft, too easy to dive into that travel, this fixes that. Because now you don't have that little like, little bit soft and then it equalizes, a little bit still soft. It's, it'll start to ramp the way it should. And that means that it's gonna like, 
get a little firmer a little quicker and keep you higher in that travel. So now you can bomb through the rough stuff and you're not gonna just like almost waste those first 10 to 15 millimeters of travel. Those 10 to 15 are still working really hard for you to keep that fork high up. So that when you do hit something big, boom, you've got all that travel available. Now, that brings us to the next point. So with the seal head sitting here, basically the only way thing they had to do to raise the air spring up was put a longer foot on it. So before this was really short and now it's about a centimeter taller than it was. That pushes the air piston up about a centimeter to hit where the dimple was. But what that did is increase the space underneath here. This space from the seal head to the bottom of the fork is essentially a second positive air spring. There is air in here. It's not being pressurized or changed based on what you're filling in the top of the fork, but it's still there and it still compresses. Cause let's watch this again. If you're compressing your fork, it's compressing the positive up here. Well, guess what? The bottom of the fork's coming up and squishing the air that's down here too. So that is a second air spring that is gonna compress and it's gonna ramp as well. Now, when you look at this, when they brought the foot nut up higher, they had to bring this seal up higher too to keep the volume of the negative spring the same. So what that did is it actually made this air chamber down here bigger because this seal used to sit right about there. So they made this positive chamber bigger, kept the negative the same, made this one just a little bit smaller, about half of a token's worth. Not a ton, but it's enough to make a difference in the way the fork feels. And it does indeed feel just more sturdy, I guess would be the word. It does take away a little bit of that small bump sensitivity. So you can experiment with running lower pressures in the um, positive, you know, maybe anywhere from like five to 10 PSI lower and see how it feels to bring back that small bump sensitivity without losing the ability to use up all of the travel on a really big hit and keep the fork riding high so that you're not just wallowing down into the, through the little stuff and losing a little bit of travel when it's time to hit something rough. So that is the way the new Debonair Air Spring works in the RockShox model year 2021 Yari, Lyric, Pike, and Revelation forks. Thanks a ton. If you like this video and you want more killer tech stuff and reviews, hit like, hit subscribe, ring that little bell so you get notified when we post something new, and now go out and ride if you can.